everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is a bit of a different video. I have been purchasing a few new little makeup bits recently. I massively needed to update my makeup collection and I thought it would be so fun to sit down and do a chatty get ready with me. I asked for some questions over on my Instagram as well, so I've got lots to answer for you guys. And I just thought we could basically sit, have a catch up and play around with some makeup. The first disclaimer of this video is there are workmen doing work right outside my house and I'm pretty sure it's going to be all day long. So I'm really, really hoping that it's not too loud in the background of this. Apologies if you can hear it. I have popped on my latest Christmassy make for this video. This is a bit of a sneak peek because I've not actually shown it on my Instagram yet. But I did go ahead and make this absolutely gorgeous top as one of my kind of like festive outfits. This is the puff and pencil tie waist top. I'll be showing loads more close ups and stuff on my Instagram very, very soon. The fabric is a gorgeous like metallic plissé fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. They may still have some, so I will link it below for you just in case, but I absolutely love it. So I thought I would put this on have a play around with a bit of a festive makeup look and just see what we come out with. Now, very excitingly, one of my favourite jewellery brands, Ana Luisa, sent me over some bits specifically to wear for this video, which is so cute. Now, Ana Luisa are based in America, but they do ship to the UK and they do the most gorgeous jewellery and most of it is gold plated which I really really like I'm the type of person that I when I find jewellery that I like I don't take it off I like sleeping it showering it so I basically need it to be at least gold plated and it's all really really affordable so they do have some amazing Black Friday sales going on soon there's so many gifting options so I thought I'd show you the options that they sent over and then at the end of the video when we've done the makeup look we can choose which ones to wear. So the first earring set, which I have actually already worn and love, they're absolutely tiny little hoops. But my favorite thing is that they have these little star on with a diamante. They're so cute. I've basically worn these non-stop since I got them and they're comfy enough to wear when I'm asleep as well. Like I literally can't even feel them. So that's option one. Then I have two other hoop options because I'm absolutely obsessed with wearing gold hoops at the minute. So these are more of a medium size and I really love like the dropped effect. They're kind of like square on the edges. Love those. I think they would look really, really cute with this. And then the last option, I've not even taken the plastic off these yet. Let me do that now. This is the last pair. So they're more of like a ball shape on the end. They're another hoop. Obsessed with these. Again, these are gold plated and I think they're just a really, really nice size. So I do have a code that you can shop through. I'm gonna pop it in the description box below if you fancy checking them out. I think I might have to go on and order myself a couple of more bits just to see me through winter because they are my go-to for any of my jewellery. So when we get to the end of the makeup look, I'm going to decide which ones to put on. Okay, let's get started with the makeup. Um, I basically purchased everything from Beauty Pie, which I already have a subscription to. If you've never shot with Beauty Pie before, it's actually amazing because it's basically like designer makeup and skincare, but for way less. Because um, like the packaging is simpler and stuff like that. You do need a membership to shop, but then you get like incredible prices for all the products. So if you are interested, I do actually have a code that I'll leave in the description box. This isn't an ad or anything. It's literally just like my referral code. So I think you get like 10 pounds off than I would as well. So I went ahead and bought their Wonder Filter Brightening Primer. I think this is supposed to be like a pearlescent primer. I have used it already and I do really like it. <laughs> then, and I went ahead and bought the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. I've seen this absolutely everywhere. I do think I used this a few years ago as well and I didn't get on with it. But I must admit I've used this for the past few days without anything else. And I'm obsessed. I got it in the shade medium and it gives the most incredible glow. So I'm going to use this one today rather than the, um, rather than the Beauty Pie. But 
This flawless filter was £39, which is actually slightly insane. The Beauty Pie one was 13 so that's like a great option if you're not sure if you're going to use it. But I'm just going to put this on under my foundation. Because I want to get a bit more of a fancy look, I am going to go in with foundation over the top. I always use NARS when it comes to foundation. I used to use the Sheer Glow, but then they came out with this light reflecting foundation. And I would say it's probably even better. So I use the shade BG. So I'm just going to do a couple of pumps of that on my brush. And let's answer a question whilst I do my foundation. So, hi Brogan, love watching you. Do you ever miss teaching since your career change? Um, no. <laughs> oh gosh, um, this is a hard one to answer. So, no, I don't think I do. And there's a few reasons for that. So, when I went into teaching, I, if you didn't know, I was a French and Spanish teacher. Um, and when I finished high school, I went straight to university. I did my French and Spanish degree. And then I went straight into teaching, mainly because I wasn't really sure what else I wanted to do. And at the time, I had been with my now husband since I was 18. I've always been quite like mature in the way that I knew I wanted a steady job, I wanted a house, I wanted to be able to travel, I wanted to be really self-sufficient. And I knew in order to do that, I couldn't just go and like gallivant around the world. I had to get a good job and start working. So I was drawn to teaching because at the time there was a really good grant to train to be a language teacher. I think it changes like um, year to year how much you get, but it was a fairly sizable amount as in you were already earning a full wage to train. So that was a big factor for me because we really wanted to buy a house. That is my foundation done. So I'm just gonna go in with a bit of concealer. This is the Everyday Great Skin Concealer by Beauty Pie. So yes, I wanted to be able to buy a house. We did that. We went to, had an amazing holiday in Cuba. We did some traveling, like all of that I couldn't have done without having gone into a career. And there are many positives about teaching. I absolutely love working with young people. I always have. Um, I loved making relationships with them. I love talking to people. I love inspiring young minds. Um, and that was amazing. But I think anyone who also works in education will know that there is a big downside to it as well. There is so much pressure. Sadly, a lot of it that you end up dealing with isn't even necessarily the teaching side of things. It's like the pastoral side. It's all of the admin, all of the proving that you can do your job even though you've trained to do it for years. And there's just a lot of other pressures. It doesn't leave you with a lot of time to enjoy life outside of teaching. The holidays are great, but you're working really, really long hours. I used to get to school four, half past seven in the morning. I would have about a 35 minute commute. So I'd be leaving my house at just before seven. A lot of time I wouldn't get home until like five, six. It is a lot. So I think it's something you have to be really, really passionate about if you want to do it. And I don't think my heart was fully in it. Obviously, fast forward to me going on the sewing bee, I realised that sewing is what I'm so passionate about. And I think especially when you have children and if you're working and spending time away from them, you have to be doing something that you love to make it worth it in my eyes. So I think everything worked out for the best and hopefully I can continue doing my sewing and my social media and stuff as my job. Right, now I'm going to go in with a cream contour. Guys, I'm trying to be a beauty girl, but I just, I've never used anything like this before. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand. Now, I tried this the other day. I'm just not sure. It's not blending how I want it to blend. I don't know if maybe I've not got the right brush. Um, I'm wondering if maybe I try and buff it in with something like this. I'm going to place it on my face and then see what I think. It just seemed Oh gosh, I've just got it actually on my finger. I'm just going to try and like go in. Okay, I've done a line. <laughs> to the other side. Oh, that looks too much. 
what have I done guys? What have I done and what am I doing? Just blend it in. See, the last time I used this, I tried to use like the little applicator and it just wasn't looking cute, but maybe I need to use an actual brush to do it. Maybe I'm getting better. I might go in and do it a little bit like along my jawline as well. As soon as I have a bit spare and I've seen the beauty girlies do this, so. We'll give it a go. I think that's one of those products that I just need to get used to applying and it might grow on me because actually that is looking quite cute. Okay, let's do another question and then I can move on to blush. What other hobbies do you enjoy besides sewing? I am one of those people who has a lot of hobbies or at least I used to when I had more time. I'm just going to go in with another Charlotte Tilbury product. This is the High Blush in, I think it's Peach Gasm, another cream product. When I was growing up, I used to always be so crafty. Like, I used to love doing knitting, paper crafts, scrapbooking. I used to do loads of baking with my mum. Um, so yeah, just in general making things, I've always loved to do. Um, and then I really got back into my sewing in lockdown. Actually, there was two things that I did loads in lockdown. So I joined the Instagram community for sewing then. Um, so I think that was like a turning point for me because I realized that sewing is so cool. I realized that there was a whole load of like indie pattern designers out there that I never knew existed. And I started to get really, really into my sewing, but also I got really into my baking. So all the way through lockdown, I basically ran my own little baking business from home. It was called Brogy Bakes. I can't even remember if I still have my Instagram live. I think I might do, but I used to put up loads of Instagram posts about all these celebration cakes I'd made. I'm not, gonna, not even gonna lie, guys. I wasn't that bad. Like, my cakes tasted good. It was really fun. It gave me, like, something to do whilst, obviously, we were in lockdown. I couldn't do anything else. So that was really fun. Um... I've always loved to read as well, but I don't really have that much time to do it now. I'm only just starting to get back into it since having my son. So I love reading. I also used to love exercise and going to the gym, but again, that's something that's just completely not a part of my life anymore. I feel like I don't have the time for it. I do enjoy going to Pilates occasionally, um, but I'm not very good at keeping up with it. I do still love fashion though, in general, and do my hair and makeup. Just me looking good makes me feel good. Like, I really struggled when baby boy was young and I didn't have like any time to put into, you know, like putting a bit of makeup on, doing skincare, like it was all the absolute basic stuff. And I know how you look shouldn't define you but to me it's really important it makes me feel good to have a nice outfit on every day and just look put together because it's always been a really big part of my life i've just gone in with this beauty pie pressed powder and um, it's just like their standard pressed powder in their lightest shade this is something i wanted to mention about beauty pie which is so cool because you buy the compacts and then these are all magnetic so you can literally just take the pan out which is so cool and then when you're finished with it, you just um, buy a new one and then put it in. And also they're so easy to get in and out. Like I've tried brands before that are this concept, but you would literally have to wrench the palette out to be able to change it. But that's just so easy. So I can highly recommend them. That was super, super affordable. Following on with that theme, I'm going to use the Beauty Pie Bronzer. I got this in one of their lightest shades and it's really nice. So I'm just gonna go over where I did all of that contour. And of course we'll answer another question. How do you find slash manage working from home with your baby boy there? I love your page. Thank you so much. So if I think back to when he was, you know, really young, obviously for the first maybe two, three months of his life, I didn't really work. Um, and then, when he was way younger, he would be napping like maybe three times a day, he'd have an hour. 
So I would basically just make sure that I was organized for when those hours came along and that's when I would be doing my work. Now we've just switched to one nap a day. He has a nap in the afternoon after lunch for a couple of hours. So that gives me some time. But when he got to about six months old, I hit probably like rock bottom in terms of just how overwhelmed I felt about everything. So basically, go back to when he was first born. I was on maternity leave from teaching. So I was still on my maternity leave wage. And it was November, he was born in October, and it was the November that I signed with my management and kind of like fully decided that, right, I'm gonna give this a go. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna have to do it now. So I started to get work coming in. I also had a really, really young baby and it was just a lot. I was feeling so stressed. I couldn't do anything in the house. Anytime he went down, I would feel like, okay, do I sew? Do I put a load of washing on? I had like a hundred things on my list before he was even fully asleep. It was stressful. And I also really struggled quite a bit with separation anxiety. <laughs> like I probably still have it a bit now, but it's one of those things that I've learned that it just gets better over time. Like I've always hated being away from him and I really struggled to like put my trust in other people to have him. But I made the decision about I can't remember if it was maybe six, seven months old, that my mum was gonna have him one day a week. Um, it started out with just a few hours and then it went up to her basically having him all day on a Wednesday, which is now my actual working day. That took a load of pressure off. And then recently we've started him at nursery as well. Again, he's only doing like a couple of hours, but it actually just the extra hours gives me a load more time because he'll go, then he'll come back, he'll have a nap. So it's actually, a bit longer than those few hours. And I think it's just gradually got easier and easier. So I always try and remind like young mums or not young mums, new mums, that at the time it feels like you're never gonna have time ever, ever again. And you kind of just need to ride the wave because you will, you will get it back again. It just takes a while and um, so just have faith. And also I like to remind people because people say to me, well, how do you find that much time to sew? It's because it's my job so I have to make time to sew and if it wasn't my job I probably wouldn't be sewing as much if that makes sense so I don't like people to compare how much they sew to how much I sew because at the end of the day I sew to pay my bills. I feel like I'm going to watch all this footage back and be like Brogan you are rambling so much. But this is what happens I feel like we're just on FaceTime together and um, that blush is stunning. Guys, my camera just overheated. I feel like this video is just not meant to be. But anyways, I was saying that I used this new Charlotte Tilbury blush palette. This was really affordable in, ter in terms of Charlotte Tilbury. I think it was 25 pounds and you get a blush and then a highlight as well. I got the light medium shade. That has gone on so nicely. I feel like it's looking so glowy. And I did just go on and put like a little bit of the highlighter along the tops of my cheeks and down my nose as well. I did do my brows off camera because I have to be about a millimeter away from the mirror when I do it. Is anyone else like that? Um, but I did use, again, a Charlotte Tilbury product. This is their brow cheat in dark brown. On one end, you basically get a little spoolie brush and then the other, it's a super thin pencil. I have used this um, previously. Actually, when I was filming for the Sewing Bee, this is what I used on my brows. And I hadn't repurchased it in a while because it is on the pricier side for a brow pencil. But I forgot how good it is. It is so easy to just make your brows look really natural because it's so thin. I got it in the color dark brown. Would highly recommend that. Okay, when it comes to eyeshadow, I'm such a basic B. Um, because I've had this eyeshadow palette. My sister bought this for me for my birthday. I was probably about 20 years old. I'm 27 now. I don't know if I really want to say that I'm using a seven year old eyeshadow palette on the internet, but. I guess I just did. I use the same colour every single time. If I didn't mention it, this is the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette. But I just use this colour here. It's like a champagne-y colour. And because we're going Christmassy, it just... It 
fits for every occasion. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on. Oh, look, just so sparkly, I love it. Oh, this is a good one. Favorite Christmas dress pattern I need help choosing. Let's discuss because I'm like the Christmas queen. I love Christmas. Um, I'm actually gonna put my tree up this weekend because the 1st of December falls on a Friday this year and I absolutely have to have my tree up for the 1st of December. I always do it the weekend before. So yeah, I'm gonna be getting in the festive mood, but Christmas party dress. I would say that when it comes to Christmas sewing, a lot of the time it's the fabric that makes it Christmassy. For example, this top that I'm wearing it's actually super simple, but because I've done it in this metallic fabric, it already looks dressy and kind of Christmassy, you know? I'm gonna go in with two of the darker shades just in my crease, by the way. But if I had to think of specific patterns, um, I'll put some pictures up so you can see. The first one that I could highly recommend that I've just recently made is the puff and pencil puff and pencil panel dress and I added the cone sleeves to it which is the same sleeves as this top and um, you basically build your pattern on the puff and pencil website it is just the most gorgeous simple kind of straight shape midi dress but you could do that in an incredible sequin fabric and it would look so chic obviously I'll put a picture in of what I made mine in it was a fabric godmother sateen again the sateen looks lush but that would be a really, really nice one. The second one that pops into my mind is the Fabric Godmother Peony dress. I've still not made a peony, I can't believe it. It's such a gorgeous pattern. It reminds me of the Vampire's Wives dresses and I did actually buy a sequin fabric to kind of like try and recreate one of my own. So that's still on the cards for my Christmas dress. I've just still not decided. But also Maison Fauve, who I am a very proud ambassador for, are releasing an incredible Christmas box. They've done an exclusive pattern for Christmas and it's a really nice long sleeved mini dress, but it has a completely open back. And they also have a red jacquard fabric to go with it. And as soon as I saw the photos, I was like, <gasps> seriously so i was thinking about doing the peony dress for mine but now i'm thinking i might have to do that maison fauve dress okay another thing that i did buy is a liquid eyeliner how 2010s of me um this is the deluxe precision liquid eyeliner from beauty pie i don't know what my thinking was behind this because i never wear eyeliner i actually have like hooded eyes so you can't really see it, but do I attempt a wing? I'm just not sure. Should we have a go? I might try and do like a really, really thin wing. I'm not sure if I'm gonna just ruin my whole makeup. This looks nice though. It's like an actual marker pen. Oh, I got it in dark brown by the way, because I thought that might be quite nice. Oh, actually super easy to apply. Actually going on really easily. <gasps> That is the best eyeliner pen I have ever used. Can you see that? That wing has just gone on so easily. I still don't know if it suits me. I actually think I prefer the eye without the wing. Wow. I'm gonna have to try. This is the thing though. You have to try and get it the same on the other side. Okay, I don't think I did a bad job there. Guys, if you're a liquid eyeliner fan, you absolutely need to try that. I think it's because the um, pen is actually quite stiff. It doesn't move. So it's really easy to just get a good line. I'm still not sure if I'm converted to liquid eyeliner, but I'm impressed. Right, I'm gonna put on some mascara. For mascara, I am so picky. I did buy one from Beauty Pie, the Wrap Star mascara but I'm just not into it. I'm not feeling it. So I'm gonna go in with my good old Benefit Bad Gal Bang. This is a little mini that I've had for longer than I probably should have. Someone's asked, how did your IBD get diagnosed? So if you missed it, I did chat a bit about this on my Instagram stories last week. 
Um, but if you didn't know, I have Crohn's disease. Um, and I mentioned on my Instagram story, I, I have mentioned it before. It's not like I try not to speak about it, but I am quite lucky in the fact that like recently it's not been a huge thing in my life because I've been doing really well with my Crohn's. And I find it really easy to forget that I have it, especially when I'm not like suffering from any symptoms. Um, but I was also amazed at just how many people have IBD that follow me or they have parents that they grew up with that had IBD and it just really enforces how many people are affected by it. So as far back as me being a baby, I always had really bad tummy issues. Apparently I literally cried for like the first eight weeks of my life nonstop. Um, and it was just put down to colic. Like my mum said that I had to be on like all of the plant-based milks and stuff. So it's always been thought that I am lactose intolerant, which I am, but also I just was really like loads of food intolerances. Like I've always been bad with a lot of gluten, lentils, like just really easy things would set me off. And then basically it wasn't until I got to about 18 and I left to go to university that I started having loads of really really bad symptoms. It just gradually got worse and worse and worse and I went to the doctors a few times but no one was taking me seriously and no one really believed that I had anything going on. In the end I actually had to get my sister to come with me to the doctors who is a doctor herself and she pretty much advocated for me and said you need to refer her <laughs> to the hospital which makes me really sad because a lot of people don't have that. I think I was about 19 or 20 when I finally got referred to the hospital and it was kind of all rushed through because I was really really struggling and I was meant to be moving to Spain the following year um, because I did French and Spanish at uni and your third year you live abroad so it was all very much like right we can't let her move to Spain like this and um, the main thing for me is that I had lost loads and loads and loads of weight just over six stone at one point which I think is quite common for a lot of people like pre-diagnosis like at their very worst like people lose a lot of weight and it was kind of twofold for me because I would eat I would be in loads of pain I'd obviously have like loads of toilet issues but then also I started to get like scared of certain foods I was just so anxious about like eating something and it setting me off so I ended up being really restricted finally got sat down in front of a consultant and generally the only way you can actually tell if you have Crohn's is to have what's called a colonoscopy so it basically is a camera up you know, <laughs> to look in your intestines. And generally they do that and then they also do one down your throat to check for things like um, celiac disease. I almost forgot the name. Even when I went to this consultant, um, he was based, his words were, I am 99.9% .9 sure that it's IBS, but if you want to go ahead and put yourself through the pain of having all these tests, then be my guest. Those were literally his words, I'll never forget it. And I actually said no at the time. Um, and I came out and my mum was so angry at me. She'd gone with me and she was like, why did you say no? Because like, think of everything you've been through and you're so close to like actually getting a diagnosis. I don't know why I said no. I think he was just successful in scaring me. And I was kind of telling myself like, you're not that bad. Like I started to wonder if I was making it up. It was just the weirdest thing. Anyway, I went in for these, I called back up and I said I wanted to have the tests, went in, they did the tests and it came out that I had Crohn's disease and I got the diagnosis and I actually cried <laughs> and I think my parents thought I was crying because obviously I was sad that I had IBD but I was actually crying because I was relieved because I'd honestly felt like I was going nuts. So I'd started to believe that maybe I'd made it like so much bigger than it was or but actually, yeah, I did have Crohn's disease. So um, they put me on steroids straight away. I think I was on steroids for about two months. I responded so well to them. Um, to this day, that's the worst sort of flare or period of time that I've had with my Crohn's ever. I've never been as bad as 
I was when I was diagnosed. And if you're watching this and you also have IBD, I really, really hope that you're doing okay with your symptoms and my DMs are always open if you need to chat to someone about it. Okay, my makeup is looking almost done. I think we need to choose a lip combo. I basically bought three lipsticks and they're all so gorgeous. So I got two nude colors. The first one I've worn already, it's In Love With Olivia and it is just the perfect nude. I love it so much. And then I tend to suit warmer tone lipsticks like nudes with an orangey base. So I did also get Mrs. Kisses, which is more like a brown, you know, like warm tone. But I think I want to go for today, seeing as we're kind of doing a Christmas inspired makeup look. This one's called Red Hot Susan. And it is a red, but that packaging it is a red but it's got more of a like brown in it I think that could look really cute so I'm gonna pop a lip liner on first this is again Charlotte Tilbury because I'm a number one fan hot gossip it's kind of like a brownie color any tips on getting out of a sewing rut well I would first say that it's very normal to get in a sewing rut I think as a creative person this is going to be hard to line and talk, isn't it? As a creative person, I think it's really easy to get in a rut because you can't have like your creative juices flowing all the time. So I would say to just give yourself the grace to just sit out for a bit and not so. Like use the time to get inspired instead. Like I recently did a campaign on Instagram uh, with Readly. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it's basically an app where you can just read all of your favorite magazines but in one app so you pay a subscription to readly rather than like all different magazine subscriptions and i have been loving it because i can get all the sewing magazines on there i can look at knitting magazines i can look at embroidery magazines and just to like see all the visual inspiration is so useful and you can like save articles and stuff. So it's almost like my Instagram saved folder. I'll like save articles of things that I like. Again, like look through Instagram, look through hashtags. Just don't put the pressure on yourself to be sewing because I think when you rush to sew something and you're not that into it, for me anyways, it just never goes that well. Oh, I love that color. This lip liner, it's quite dark, but it just goes with everything. Is there anything better than putting on a brand new lipstick though? When the edges are like so sharp. Oh my goodness. Stunning. With that lip liner, that looks so nice. I'm gonna have to try to recreate this for Christmas day, honestly. Other tips for sewing ruts. Try and sew something completely different to what you've been sewing. You guys know that I love a dress, I love a gathered dress, I love puff sleeves, but you know if I've done maybe like three or four projects with puff sleeves in a row, it feels so tedious to sew it because all the steps are like almost the same and I'm like, ugh, more gathering stitches. So one thing, I can remember I was in a bit of a sewing rut and then I made my dandelion jacket by Maison Fauve. And it was the best thing I ever did because the instructions were so different to what I'd been sewing before. There was a lining, there was techniques that I'd not really done before and it actually got my brain working again. So for example, if you've been sewing loads of dresses, try a stretch project or try doing a home sewing project instead. Like could you do an advent calendar or do you need some new cushion covers? I think the main thing with a sewing rot is getting stuck in a cycle of doing stuff that's similar. I think that is the makeup done. I am obsessed. I honestly don't think my makeup has looked this good ever. I try to think how long I've been sitting here doing this. I have so many other things to do. Whoops. So let me get another question whilst we do my hair. I'm really struggling with sharing any tips. Oh my gosh, we could be here all day if we spoke about sharing, but you guys know that I love sharing. So there are a few key things when it comes to sharing. First of all, it's not you, it's probably your machine. Um, I have a Husqvarna Brilliance machine 
sewing machine, which I love. I cannot shirk on it. I cannot do it. Um, my old Faf Passport is my shirring machine because I know the exact settings that I need for it and it just works every single time. So I would say that if you have access to more than one machine, maybe like your mum has one or you could borrow one from a friend, if you've been trying everything, try another machine and see if you can get it to work. Um, I'm going to put this headband on. I bought it randomly in Claire's the other week and I'm obsessed. We need to choose some earrings. I've already worn the tiny, tiny hoops. And I do love these, but I just think this whole outfit has such a vintage vibe. So I'm gonna go for the, like, ball kind of hoops. I feel like these remind me of something that my grandma would have worn in like the best way. Cause she's so stylish. Guys, I'm not even going anywhere today. I'm literally just about to sew matching jumpers for me and baby boy. Um, this is your reminder that I'm going to put a link for the jewellery in the description box because if you need something else for your Christmas list, you absolutely have to check these out from Anna Louisa. That is it. I had so much fun filming this video. What time is it? I've been sat here for an hour. What in the world? I need to go have lunch and get on with all the other jobs that I need to do. I really, really hope you enjoyed this. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to try and be a beauty influencer. It's not going to be a regular occurrence on my YouTube channel. <laughs> if you enjoyed it, please do let me know. Um, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.